Welcome back to the morning show here on the Rise News. I am Ade Sua. Omar Ruan. I'm Rafael Yosseli. And I am Sheeton Atigari. Good morning. Now, globally, international competitiveness and the logistics industry is rated 4.3 billion US dollars as at 2018. And that is why the international competitiveness and logistics sector have the highest potential to reduce the cost of trade and to boost integration in the global value chain because it is the backbone of trade and commerce, especially in this era of cross-border transaction and the e-commerce wave. A very good stance on that. International competitiveness and logistics is a comprehensive measure of the efficiency of international supply chains and unique benchmarking tools created to help countries identify the challenges and opportunities they face in their performance on trade logistics and what they can improve as regards their performance. And joining us now is Dr. Obiora Madu, Vice President of the Association of Outsourcing Pr Practitioners of Nigeria and Director General of the African Center for Supply Chain. He's a fellow of Chartered Institutes of Logistics and Transport, Institute of Export of Nigeria, Chartered Institute of Supply Chain, Ghana, and Certified Institute of Warehousing, as well as the Institute of Logistics Management. Thank you so much, Dr. Madu, for joining us this morning. Thank you very much. Uh, well, you hit that figure there. Uh, let's start by understanding what we are dealing with, because when it comes to logistics on the continent of Africa, the challenges are just as diverse as the opportunities. But paint a picture for us. How does Nigeria fare in that multi-billion dollars uh, sector? Okay, maybe we should do a bit of a background so that mm. yes. we understand what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. of course. Logistics is basically about the movement and storage of both people and material, that's goods. Mm -hmm. And um, under transportation, of course, you know, we have five modes of transportation, even though they're adding six and seven, mm -hmm. one, the drones and the rest oh, of yes. them. So that is key to the development of any economy. How competitive an economy is would depend on that. Hmm. Look, globally, you have mentioned the figure. Yes. Career-wise, it is the fastest growing career in the world hmm. because it starts from the beginning of the procurement of the raw material until finished goods are delivered to the end customer. So it's quite huge. And no nation jokes with it unless you want to be like us. Mm. Now, let's come back to what you said about Nigeria. Mm -hmm. We have not done well. There's a document produced by World Bank on annual basis, the Logistics Performance Index. We're waiting for the current edition but in the, land, in the last edition, we were 110 out of, out of 154. Ooh. We actually were 90. We came up to 75. Then we dropped further and then dropped again. So why did we, how did we manage to come up? When we did port concessioning and the rest of them, you know, when you make policies, because that's what really happened. That's why it looks like, why have we gone up and we're not seeing anything? Mm -hmm. When you make policies <laughs> that looks good, you move up the ladder. But when you have not implemented by the time the next report will, then you go back to where, where you're coming from. That's, mm -hmm. what, that's, that's what happened to us from 75. We went all the way down. Countries like Rwanda, small, small African countries are ahead of us. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, um, World Bank said that no nation that fail to pay attention to logistics can progress. Mm. In fact, the Prime Minister of Malaysia said 2005, the Malaysian economy blew up the day they put a highway all the way from the north to the south. Mm. 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 Logistics is really very important. I mean, one of the richest men in the world at some point, Aristotle Onassis, was in the logistics business. He took oil through his super tankers from one place to another. Let's talk about logistics on the sea as regards Nigeria and the ports. Yeah. Because that's one major deposition point. As a logistics practitioner, look at the state of the ports and how it's hampered logistics <coughs> in Nigeria. It's a very sad thing because government the revenue that comes from government from the ports does not justify the lack of attention being paid to the ports. 
And it seemed to be all the pots. Because even if you go to One in Port Harcourt, you find the same challenges. If you look at the six parameters that the World Bank considers for that logistics performance index, most of them are actually at the port. Ease of shipment and ease of coming in of goods, access to the, to the port itself, timeliness of transactions, quality of logistics infrastructure, quality of logistics services. So now you will not be surprised why we are where we are. So the ports are increasing the cost of doing business every day. I mean, the bridges are not built for trailers to pack on. Mm. But that's what we have here because of accessibility. People have no business to the port. And we have, not, we have failed to apply technology, mm. which is obtainable elsewhere in the world. When we visited the, the Malaysian uh, uh, sea port, you'll be wondering, isn't anything happening around here? Because a ship bets, and in a twinkle of an eye, you can't find the containers. Go to Jebel Ali Free Zone in, Wari, the, I mean, sorry, in Dubai, the port there. The same thing. So it's, uh, the, 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 the most annoying thing is that at the end of the day, the poor buyer is the one who bites the bullet. Yes. That, that's the most annoying thing. So uh, we've had so many executive orders. We must clear in 48 hours. We must do this. Even we must even clear a papa. Go just visit a papa, and then you find out how is it. But Kyrie will say we say otherwise. He'll say it's a work in progress. A lot has been done. The place there are no tankers on the bridge again. I mean, I drove to Surulere uh, on Sunday. There were no tankers on the bridge. He'll say I've done a good job. Did you go further to get to instead of coming to a Kobli bridge, mm -hmm. you head towards a papa? Anyway, the, the point is this: it's not about what anybody says on TV. It's the reality on ground. It's about the cost. We are so, we, we are not competitive globally. And the port is also a major accountable issue to it. You have um, uh, terminal operators who are working under very, very difficult environment. So they wake up one day, they will just increase their charges. Because they have cost to bear. They invested in infrastructure and they have to make money. There are so many court cases down between them and those who are regulating the like ports. Like the AP Mollers of the world. Exactly. So, so it, 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 uh, the, the port is not helping matters and the government need to pay attention to it. I don't know when we will get it right, but the fact is that the cost of living in this country will continue to go up. Uh, if you go to passport offices, <laughs> you wonder what is going on, really. I, I, you know, I like the fact that you mentioned um, technology. Yeah. Now, according to um, a report released in 2018, uh, about the Global Competitiveness Report released in 2018, it says that there's a strong correlation between competitiveness, the income level, infrastructure, and technology. Mm. Now, what would your advice be to the current administration? How do we tackle these three things? Because we don't want to just keep on having these conversations. How do we start to tackle it? It's hydra-headed, but we have to start from somewhere. I'm sure before we finish that we'll still talk about the closed border and the rest of them, of because course. it's all about yeah, logistics. Yeah, exactly. That was my next question. So, technology. There's a supply chain technology called RFID, Radio Frequency Identification. With it, that's what is accountable for Walmart being the cheapest retail store in the world. Because you can crash down logistics costs by using RFID. In that very particular port in Malaysia that I told you that we went to, they use RFID. So, infrastructure, there are two types of infrastructure. The hard infrastructure and the soft infrastructure. And you need both. The hard infrastructure is the road, those sports, physical, this thing. The soft infrastructure is the quality of service, and has to, that has to do with people. As I speak to you, Nigerian universities are just beginning to wake up to the fact that this is the fastest growing career in the world. We're working with so many years curriculum. We're not attending to what is hot on the table. So, 
I, I'm, I'm talking generally about where we need to start. We need to do something about hard infrastructure. We need to do something about soft infrastructure. Then, of course, quality of service. If you're talking about the port, customs is a huge part of it. So, because if you don't do that, you talked about poverty, Income competitiveness, levels. all that is what you are going to face. Yeah. Well, I, I rightly said, because we cannot talk about logistics and not talk about borders, skills, customs and regulation, policies and governance. And so I want to bring in the issue of border here. Um, the federal government took that decision in August last year, thereabout, to close uh, borders with neighbors. <clears throat> Was that a wise decision in your own opinion, uh, when you look at logistics and how that improves even integration on the continent and trade? Secondly, do we have a national logistics policy? If thank we do you, not, thank you very much for if that. we do not, how important is it for us to have one? Thank you very much. You know, first of all, I listened to a guest who was on the program here. Okay. And he said, you belong to a community that is planning integration. So closure of the border does not help in any way. But the federal government have a point in saying that even though we're a community, there are also rules that the other parties are not obeying and that they have had several discussions. So I cannot really say it is good or bad, because if you look at it, even on the effect in the economy, mm -hmm. there are the good sides of it, there's also the bad side of it. Mm -hmm. The other thing to look at is, <coughs> will it be possible to achieve the same objective without shutting the border? The answer again is yes, it's possible. So? Technology, it is possible to achieve that without this thing, a stronger, Custom service and technology, you won't need to shut the border. Mm. So the, the, the point is that we are the driving force for the ECOWAS economy. You need to know really what is going on with other economies because of what has just happened. It's not about Benin Republic that is closed, it's all the way down. It's all the way down. So the point is we can do better. Right now, well, we hear that the, it might be open and the rest of them, but the fact is that there is a lot of work to be done. Okay. All this signing on to an agreement and turning around to do something else is not good for our image. Okay, Dr. Madu, we'll go on a quick break and we'll come back for you to respond to the national policy on yes, logistics. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, just stay with us. You're watching The Morning Show here on Arise News. It's great to have you back. You're still watching The Morning Show here on Arise News. And Dr. Obiara Madu was the Vice President of the Association of Outsourcing Practitioners of Nigeria, Director General of the African Center for Supply Chain, and a logistics expert, really, to say, is still here with us in the studio. Thank you so much for staying with us. Uh, my se second part of my question was the national logistics policy. Do we have one? And how important is it? We don't have a national logistics policy, unfortunately. We have a couple of what we call transport policies. Every year or thereabout, there's a meeting of all the commissioners of transport nationwide and um, the federal level sit down to talk, agree. But of course, you know, typical of us, when we return next year, we we'll move on to other things. Mm. Because we don't measure anything in this country. That is the, that's the problem. So we do not have, and we, what we need is not a national transport policy. Oh. What we need is a national logistics policy. Because once you call it logistics, it tells you that it is beyond transport. It's not just about transport. So we actually had launched, uh, African Center for Supply Chain had launched something on how we can develop a national 
logistics policy. But you know, from the private sector, there's a limit to what you can. You are not even a policymaker, but mm -hmm. you are just trying to help. But if you don't get a, 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 a cooperation, then uh, we left it halfway. So go and check any serious country. Look for it on the internet. You can download their national logistics policy. They are there. Mm. So that's how serious it is. So the, it, it's a clear indication. Look, the glo global trend is integration. Mm. First of all, you have a ministry of transportation and you have a ministry of aviation. Let, 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 me, let me pick you up on, on, that, on that school of thought. A lot of people will be quick to say to you, and they'll say this, they'll say, oh, in all fairness, the Ministry of Transportation deals with everything land and sea transportation. And I'll give you an instance, and I, to segue into my question. Rail that we have today, the government is doing so much in rail. Prior to the 60s, we used to do millions of tonnage in rail. Rail will definitely change the logistic outlook in this country definitely. when it picks up fully. So they'll say, okay, the Ministry of Transport will handle that. What's your take on that? And secondly, I also want to ask you, we're saying that things are not working in the logistics sector, but a lot of young people out there are using logistics, they are raising money, they are bringing technological solutions. Recently, Cobalt 360, Obiozo, I know raised them. close to $15 million <coughs> from Goldman Sachs, still in this logistics sector. That's right. What would you say about those two things, real and okay, the fact that let, people let's are using start. technology? You know what it means is that we, should, we need a ministry of rail, a in ministry of maritime. Ministry. Yes, because <coughs> do you know that the maritime industry, if fully exploited, mm. will make nonsense of oil? The blue industry, yeah. Yes, the blue industry. The blue industry. It will make nonsense economy. of oil. So yeah. what I'm trying to say is this. Look, part of the challenge we have with road is that a different ministry is, co is constructing road and moving. And doing little about how to manage and maintain the road, how to keep statistics of usage, damages. First of all, you see a little spot. Before you know it, it becomes a creek because nothing has been done about it. In fact, people were even suggesting maybe we should move construction of road to Ministry of Transportation. But I think so that the same people. From wrong. I think there's FEMA. Yes. Yeah. No, I just roads. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Look, Federal Roads Maintenance Federal Agency. Federal Roads Maintenance Agency. We agency. have everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you live in Lagos. Yes. Uh -huh. So we have FEMA. Not, I think Lagos State TV we has, have the state, has one. Yes. Uh -huh. So what I, the point I'm trying to make is this. Integration is the name of the game at the moment. You cannot separate. If you go to Dubai, go to Jebel Ali Free Zone, the port there. It's about 10 minutes drive to the cargo airport. It's about 10 minutes drive to the container terminals. A big ship will burn. And before you, you know it, you start looking for where the containers are. They are out of the place. So the, 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 the issue is not, we need rail badly. We also need, if we use the water, it also relieve a lot. Take Lagos. There's a lot of plans now on how to use water transportation to reduce the distance, and we have the, everything is on ground. You know, the annoying thing is that our ports and most of those things are actually natural. Some of the ports you meet elsewhere are man-made, mm. but very big ships cannot even bat in your papa port. The deepest. The draft is about 14. I think uh, some ships need up to 17. Mm. So the, the thing is, if you have, going back to what she said about <laughs> policy, that is it. If you have a holistic policy, mm. which also includes integration, mm. then you know that you're on the right path. I asked a second question about how young businesses in logistics are okay. using technology, and they're raising a lot of big capital, and, and they're doing quite well. You, you know the truth is that when you have chaos, as we have, it's also a lot of opportunity. Mm. I know a lot about Kubo 360 because we work with them. We, we handle the capacity building component of their business. It's amazing. People are rushing to the embassy, renewing passports. Meanwhile, 
young men who studied outside Nigeria, who has the, have the choice to stay, are coming back. Apart from Kobo 360, there's another company, ZP Logistics. ZP Logistics. These are young men in their 30s who have brought disruption, serious disruption in the logistics industry. So what it is saying is that in this confusion, there are also opportunities. But the fact is that you have to be able to play in the current trend. You just mentioned it. Where's Ekene Dichuku mm. and the rest of them? They're still they're, they're in logistics. Mm. Because no, I, 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 know that, I know that they are there. Mm. But you know what? The point is that if um, you can't play in the current game, like Kobo 360 them and the rest of them, mm. to raise the kind of money. When I visited the office for the first time, I was expecting to come in and see trucks. Mm. Yeah. But when I walked in, I rather saw a call center. Yeah. So they don't see, they, they are a logistics company, but an IT company. Oh, yes. yes. So the, 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 the IT logistics. component is what is driving the entire thing. Mm. Young people, are, about 50 of them are talking to people, monitoring movement of trucks and the rest of them. So the, the fact is that that's the, it takes us back to this issue of technology. Mm. Whatever it is you do, mm. if you are not applying technology <coughs> today, then you are planning to close down. I mean, we have spoken about you know, bridging our gap, and you know, yesterday we were actually talking about you know technology in education, technology mm -hmm. in uh, uh, healthcare. So now we're talking about technology in uh, logistics planning, and you've spoken about creating a holistic policy that that has integration within it. You work with Cobo 360, so you, and in capacity development, so you are aware of the challenges that they face because there are a number of people that are aware of the opportunities that are set in place will have no idea how to go about it or cannot raise fifty million dollars mm. like yeah, you know close, this, to. close yeah. to fifty million dollars like these people were able to. Now very quickly before we go on a break, I would just like you to highlight some of these opportunities and how best it is, you know, these young men or women can go about it. Okay. One of the major challenge in logistics today is last mile delivery. Mm. There are huge opportunities. There's a young man I'm mentoring from Lagos Chamber of Commerce. <coughs> He started with three motorcycles. Mm. Mm. What does he do? Register with all these vendors, Smoothie and the rest of them. Mm. And once they say an order, they just call them, they go and pick. Today he has about 17 motorcycles. Mm. He ha he's actually bidding to buy a moribund Korea company. Mm. So the, the, the opportunities in logistics is so huge. But you know, like every other thing, if you are outside, you can't see it. <laughs> so I, everybody, the, the thing is that we despise the days of small beginning. You can't wait to be a Kobo to raise $50 billion and the rest of them. But you can actually start from the scratch. I mean, I've been in logistics for 20-something years now. I have certified students all across Nigeria. And I know what they are doing, both working for other people and working for themselves. So the opportunity, that's why I say, is the fastest growing career in the world today. OK. And before I let you go very quickly, with the AFCFTA in view, um, how should Nigeria be positioning herself as the largest economy on the continent? And we know logistics plays a key role. I'll give you, let me just give you a quick example. Kenya found out that they can sell coffee to Nigeria at better prices and also make more money. I did a research for them about four years ago. From that time till now, no shipment has been made. You know why? Logistics. Mm. Because you probably you have to ship to Europe before it comes here. There was a study. We went for a program in South Africa. They say we are about 20% of the world population. That's Africa. Mm -hmm. Most of the natural distance are domiciled in Africa. Mm -hmm. Our contribution to global trade is about 4%. Even less. Even 3%. It's less than 4%. Less than 4%. So, and then the study was, what seemed to be the problem? Logistics and supply chain. That's, that's where the problem is. So, the point is that the ACFC is a huge opportunity, mm -hmm. but it's also dangerous. Mm. Because Manufacturers Association of Nigeria were shouting, no, we won't sign. Yeah. We're 
I, I don't know where we are going to be ready. You know that the EPA with Europe up mm. to today is still hanging. Yeah. Why is it? Because we are not ready. This EPA had run for like 10 years, which was one way, and they gave you opportunity to be ready. You are not ready. If they give you another 20 years, so the, the thing We have is, not still taken the opportunity of Agoa. I was just going, you took it from my mouth. I, I said, Agoa, how many years? If somebody was jubilating that Agoa had been extended, I said, go and sit down. <laughs> All the years it has been, 20 something years, mm -hmm. what have you done as a nation? So many countries like Mauritius, look, we produce, we are the largest producer of about seven <coughs> agro produce. We are not listed as exporters for any of them. You know, I was at an event. When I finished, I said, God must be angry with us because there is nothing that we need that we don't have. Well, we're in spiritual control. Pray for forgiveness. <laughs> <laughs> As usual. Uh, thank you so much. And serious note, thank you so much. And we do hope that we get our acts right. Uh, Dr. Madhu, thank you for being on the show this morning. All right.